So we're going to do a little test here to see if you guys can notice anything in my video. Okay, so pay close attention. We'll be right back. <laughs> you guys notice anything? Is it something that's visible? Can you see this? This is what they missed. The Secret Service missed this. All right, fam, so we are back at it again with another crazy video. Now, I don't want to do too much talking in the beginning of the video, but this right here don't make sense, okay? This just don't make sense. There's a lot of things coming out about the shooter, Donald Trump. It's just still not making sense to me. I think everybody question is how. Like, how did this even happen? Like, we know why it happened. People just really don't like Trump, okay? We know why it happened, but how? Like, how did you get past Secret Service heavy police like how did you get past these people and how did they not take you out from the beginning like they seen you first I, it just don't make sense to me okay but anyways we're gonna go ahead and get into this video this is the latest clip from cnn so without further ado hit the like button subscribe to our post notifications let's get it let's go aaron there's been some developments as the investigation has progressed you know what the what the investigators are telling us is as far as a motive a manifesto um the reasoning behind this the suspect is still a blank slate, but what they have developed is a lot of the background about what happened that day. They know that he went to his employer at the nursing home where he works as a dietary specialist before this and said, I need Saturday off. I have something important to do. Um, but he told his co-workers, I'll see you on Sunday. So he changed his days off, presumably for this. We also understand that when he got to the fairgrounds where this rally was being held for Donald Trump, the first thing that puts him on the radar of security people is near the magnetometer area where they're screening people in, he's carrying in his hand a rangefinder. It's a device that looks like a small pair of binoculars, but it's used by shooters to measure the distance when they're setting up a long distance shot. Uh, because he didn't have a weapon, that would not have prevented him to go, to go through security. Uh, but they did flag, what does he have this in his hand for? Um, at that point, they told people, keep an eye on this guy. But then he leaves the secure area, the staging area, and he... But pause, wait. You telling me they let this man in the building, or let this man in, in, the, in the area where the President of the United States is. You telling me this man has something that shooters use. I, I never heard of that. You know what I'm saying? Like, I never heard of that. That's crazy. But you telling me that they that he had a device that shooters use when, when targeting long distance shots. And y'all didn't, y'all question it. It was like, oh, why he got this? But because he don't have a weapon, let him in. What? what? That that doesn't even make logical sense. A man has had, he has a device that is that shooters use. But because he didn't physically have a weapon, y'all said, hey, let him all in. Oh my gosh, bro. It doesn't turn up again for some time until uh, the crowd says there's a guy crawling up the roof and it appears he has a rifle. There is an eerie moment in here, Aaron, where he's mm -hmm. taking the rangefinder and he's looking through it at the counter sniper positions. And one of the counter sniper positions is looking at him through the scope. At this point, there's not a gun in the picture, as I understand it, but they're saying. He's looking at us, looking at him. Then when people alert the police uh -huh. and they try to come up the ladder to get him and he confronts them with the AR-15 gun, um, they dive for cover. And then a moment later, he opens fire. But a lot of this sounds very spread out. The end of it happens very quickly. The last piece is the search of the car. Um, as we reported last night, two remote-controlled um, IEDs, uh, remote controlled bombs in the car, the remote control for those devices found on his person on the roof, um, according to yeah. sources, uh, three fully loaded magazines with nearly 100 rounds, a bulletproof vest. So it raises the question, did he expect to escape from this? And if so, what was all that intended for? What was to happen next? 
um, questions that are still open in the minds of these investigators. So some information that was repeated there is stuff we've already spoken about, but not all. One of the first things reported there has to be the most shocking. Supposedly, the perpetrator earlier that day went through a Secret Service security checkpoint with his rangefinder, and he was apparently spotted scoping out the counter sniper position. So we previously played a clip where it was a bunch of rally goers who had spotted him supposedly looking through a rangefinder, and that already was shocking enough, but that wasn't nearly as damning for the Secret Service as this is. You know, given the previous context, there's an element of plausible deniability. If it's just rally goers who spotted him, did they report it? Did they not report it? Did they report it in time? There's all kinds of factors that could be at play. But now we're talking about something completely different. We're talking about the Secret Service having spotted this individual with a rangefinder. They let him in with said rangefinder and apparently even saw him doing reconnaissance work on the counter sniper position. And all they did was note it off as suspicious. Let's keep it an eye on him. And that's where it gets even more frustrating and more confusing. They then proceeded to do what? Literally not keep an eye on him. Oh, here's this suspicious character with a tool that shooters use at a presidential rally, just casually pinging the distance of the counter. Bro, that's exactly what I'm saying. That, like, it, it, it don't make sense. It, it truly don't make sense. I didn't know none of, I didn't know none of this information. See, the only information I knew was I knew that people that was at the rally, they seen the man the, and, and the man seen them and he didn't care and he still went ahead and did what he wanted to do. And it's just, it, it's crazy to me how he was let in with something that shooters use. And he was let in the, in a facility, in a place where our president will be there on a stage. It, like I, like I, I still, it don't make sense. It, it truly don't make sense. It's like, how, like, like I said, we know the why, but how, how was this even possible? It's crazy, bro. Counter sniper location on top of the adjacent roof. Nothing to see here. Seems a little suspicious. Eh, let me continue to eat this hot dog and drink my grape soda. How is it possible that he was allowed in with a rangefinder? Is he in all of his golf gear? Is he a freaking caddy who just got off work at a golf course across the street? Obviously not. The questions here keep mounting. How was this kid able to assume that position with all of the stuff that he was doing? I'm just gonna insert this little comedy skit right over here. So we're gonna do a little test here to see if you guys can notice anything in my video. Okay, so pay close attention. We'll be right back. Heck you know, bro. <laughs> you guys notice anything? Is it something that's visible? Can you see this? This is what they missed. The Secret Service missed this. Now, obviously, the clip is a little bit exaggerated. It's purposely hyperbolic because it's supposed to be a joke, but in a certain way, it kind of highlights the absurdity of it all now, doesn't it? It's all just so insane and so completely unbelievable. You know, again, I'm gonna preface by saying this. I'm not making any statement as a matter of fact. I think I'm simply feeling like everybody else is feeling. Searching for a logical explanation. Look, I don't want to be cynical. I don't want to always automatically assume the darkest scenario. But in this case, frankly, you have to have your own head up your behind to ignore the glaring issues. And the more we learn, the more issues arise. We're now also learning that it's possible that the shooter had an accomplice. Some people are talking about multiple shots being fired. I wouldn't go that far. The only evidence that people are showing so far is a picture of a water tower. Supposedly shots came from that Pennsylvania water tower. They're pointing to this video right over here. Hold that chart. That chart's a couple of months old. And if you uh, want to really see something that said, take a look at what happened. Oh. It seems as though there's some sort of anomaly on top of the tower, but really it's grainy footage and the camera's moving. Some people are convinced that this is a person, but actually it's just a star that's painted on top of the water tower, or rather painted on the side, and then there's that little cap on top. I got a high resolution photo of the water tower just to show you guys. So I'm not going as far to suggest that there was a second shooter. I think honestly, at this point, that's completely ridiculous. But what is raising questions, and I don't know exactly- Nah, if it was, if it was a second shooter, bro, and both of y'all missed, oh man, bro, that- like, first of all, I'm glad that y'all missed, but I'm just saying, if it was a second shooter and both of y'all missed, fam, I don't know who even thought to give y'all a gun. Like, if it was two people, bro, it can't be. It can't be two people. It, it was just that one person, 
I know everybody got their little conspiracies and how they think is it was this person and this person was in on it and you got the girl in the back of Trump, she was in on it. Like you got all these different conspiracies, but I just believe that this man acted on himself. I believe that this man really like he made a video publicly, posted it before even going after Trump and said, Hey, I hate Republicans, I hate Trump and whatever else he said, I don't remember, but he definitely said he hate Republicans, he hate Trump, he hate all that. And he went after Trump. I think it was just uh, in, uh, inside thing that he he has so much anger built up in him that he wanted to take out Trump. He wanted to take out Trump himself. And I don't know how he thought he was going to get away with that, but pff, thank God he missed. Thank God he missed. Where this is going to lead, but I'll show it to you guys and it's highly suspicious. Supposedly, a transmitter was found in the perpetrator's possession after the threat was taken down. Take a look at this clip from Matt Tardio, a retired Green Beret. Things just got more weird for the President Trump assassination attempt. Right down here below is a transmitter, and we're about to talk about why that is a huge flippin' deal. For those that don't know, my name is Matt Tordio. I'm a retired Green Beret and prior law enforcement officer, and I happen to be an explosives expert on top of all that. So what does that transmitter have to do with the explosives found inside the vehicle, and what does it tell us about the suspect? So obviously he presses a series of buttons on the transmitter, which then goes towards the receiver. It then sends out an electrical impulse, which then runs through the charge and detonates it. Now that electrical impulse that's sent out by the receiver, or in this case, we're gonna call it the switch, is not enough to set off the main charge. That my friends is why electric blasting caps exist. Now, if that's the case, and he actually had his explosive devices rigged up to an electric blasting cap, he could have acquired them one of two ways. The first way is he could have made them. Precursors are readily available at numerous places here inside of the United States, and truthfully, I've even had them sent to my front door off of Amazon. Now, he could have taken those precursors and mixed his own explosives out of it and made his own electric blasting cap. Only problem is, in order to do that, it requires a very precise formula, and it's highly volatile when you're making and drying it. But I want you to look at it from a foreign actor's perspective. If you are going to be training somebody and giving them the means in order to do what this gentleman did, would you want them to have a social media platform? The answer is no, because all they have to do is make one dumbass comment, and the whole thing is going to get tipped off to law enforcement. So you would want to recruit somebody like him who has been picked on in school, likely has a couple mental issues, but also has no real social media presence and likely gets his interactions online through different platforms like, I don't know, say 4chan or Reddit. Once they've got him recruited, then they just need to talk to him. Once they're talking to him, either through, you know, emails, private messages, whatever, right? There's a million different ways to do it. They don't even have to meet up with the guy. They can just give him a series of tasks. And then once he completes those tasks and they know he's good to go, then they can start dead dropping him the different things that he needed in order to conduct this attack. This whole thing looks shady as hell. You know, again, going right back to that same point, the more information that drops, the more questions I have. Something just isn't right. Or as I keep saying, the whole thing is simply unbelievable. Now, those are the latest updates. I want to finish off this video just by showing you guys two reenactment videos, just to show you how close of a call these shots were. Some people on the internet really put it into visual form. Just take a look at how close of a call it was. Take a look what happened. How crazy is it when you put it into perspective? Half an inch closer, and American history would have been altered forever. And probably not in a good way. A literal bullet was dodged, and thank heavens for that. Anyways, that's what I got for you guys on this one. Thanks for watching, friends, and I'll see you on the next one. I don't even know what to truly think. You know what I'm saying? With all this, with everything that's coming out, you know what I'm saying? Because this is crazy. This is truly crazy to me. This is beyond me, my guy. I don't understand how is it even possible, how this man was even able to get on the roof, how was he even able to get past Secret Service with, with the device that shooters use, like... How is all this even possible? You feel me? I can't say, oh, I hope they should have upped their security. I can't say that. They had police at the building that the man was on top of the roof at. at like, how? <laughs> like, seriously, how? But, you know, at the end of the day, you know, uh, we all we all should be thanking God that, you know, our president of the United States wasn't assassinated. I believe that God truly has a plan for Donald Trump, for America. You feel me? But 
again, like I said, it should always be God before our president. I feel like a lot of people are putting Trump before God. You feel me? I feel like everybody is is worshiping Trump as if he is God. But again, we have to understand that God is God and we should not have no other gods before the one and only true God. So for everyone that is putting Trump before God and making it seem as if Trump is just the the it's like remind yourself that trump is still a human he is still a human and like i said i thank god that he was not assassinated i thank god that the bullet missed him by a literally an inch bro he like the moment like dude had the the right shot boom but god just huh. hit him in the ear you feel me and it missed his head one inch one inch what one inch like this or whatever boom could have been a headshot trump could have been out of here but so many people would have been devastated. I would have been devastated. We all would have been devastated. We know that this president is a president who is trying to make America great again. But remind yourself that Trump is still a human being. He still has flaws. And at the end of the day, we can only trust in God and trust that God can lead Trump in the right direction so America can be better again. I just want to say that. You feel me? So don't be putting Trump above God as if Trump is just the, the, the higher power because he's not. He's still a human. You feel me? He's still Lord and God, and God is still the higher power. So at the end of the day, God protected this man for a reason trump has a purpose and a plan that that god well god has a purpose and a plan for trump for america so without further ado man uh yeah y'all let me know what y'all think about all this information that did just come out well i don't know if this did just come out this was posted a day ago but i don't know when the cnn clip came out but it's just crazy to see like how this stuff played out i'm still curious on how all this played out and how this happened like this is this is like beyond me bro like seriously bro <laughs> but y'all let me know what y'all think about this in the comment section below man hit the like button subscribe turn on post notifications be your boy Japan. make sure y'all definitely subscribe to the channel you don't want to miss out on the crazy videos that i have planned so yeah hit the like button subscribe turn on post notifications be your boy Japan. i love each and one of y'all god bless stay blessed peace